we rapidly approach the release of our original series, Cities in Crisis, Youth Violence, we will be discussing various social ills that plague the globe. We do this because we care about humanity and we want to do our part in making this world a better place to live. Here to help me with that is our official consultant, famed prison coach, John Fuller. How you doing, brother? Fine, so Nice to be back, my brother. Good to see you. Good to see you again, man. Doc, what are we discussing on this installment of our Cities in Crisis preview segment? I guess it's the correlation between uh, sex offenders and generally what they're uh, convicted of as opposed to drug offenders. What are some of those disparities? Well, when it comes to sex offenders, um, most are sentenced to six to eight years and they can get out on good behavior. So the average sex offender might spend two and a half years in prison. The, what I find very ironic though is that you have the older people who get sex offended, do who sexual offenses are perpetrated against, their sentence can be longer if you perpetrate that against an adult. Once you get down to a teenager, the sentence is less and the penalty is even less if it's an infant. Now, when you look at a drug offender, particularly anyone under the Rockefeller drug law or the federal sentencing guidelines, there is no, there's no parole. So you have individuals doing life for five grams of crack in the state of Texas. The penalties for marijuana are much higher than that for a sex offender. For instance, if you're in Texas and you're making marijuana inside of a pound cake, so let's just say the cake weighs two pounds. If you put a teaspoon of marijuana in it and you're convicted, the whole weight of the cake is what you get charged with marijuana. So it's a disparity. And those individuals, there is no parole for them. And so always a huge disparity. I think the nation is just too soft on individuals being convicted of sexual offenders and overly harsh on individuals who are nonviolent drug offenders. Refusing to represent Dennis Haster, does this affect your clientele or does it boost your respect level? Um, I doubt that it will reduce my clientele level because I've never represented anyone that has been accused of um, domestic violence, child molestation, child pornography, or anything of that nature, so it doesn't matter. I'd rather be broken in knowing that um, I don't stand for certain things as opposed to compromising my principles and my business. Now, as an ex-offender, speak about the chances of survival for inmates with such charges. Well, that, that can vary. You have some guys who are put away in uh, facilities which are strictly for sexual offenders. So quite naturally, they're among their own peers, their own kind. Then you have individuals, uh, should Dennis Hastert uh, ever be convicted of those charges, he may go to a camp where he's not necessarily in a situation where his life might be put in jeopardy. But then you have a certain segment of inmates who are convicted of those charges and they're maybe in a medium, a high security prison. And people are just waiting to get their hands on someone like um, someone like Mr. Hastert. I'm not sure if you're familiar with a, a classic film, classic film from back in the 70s. It's called Short Eyes. And what was really terrifying is that the COs put his charges out there to the population. What are the chances of Dennis going through something like that? Well, if he rubs the CO the wrong way, that information could come out quickly, but inmates watch television. And so you have a certain segment of inmates who are gonna see this guy coming from the door and they'll know who he is. He was a Republican uh, House Speaker for so many years. People are very in tune to who, this, who Mr. Hastert is. He's a longtime native of Illinois, and so if he's in a state facility, they'll know him. But he'll also be under some protection by uh, and, um, the people who are running that facility, whether it's a warden, associate warden, uh, lieutenants and captains. They'll see that he's protected because of his status. Give us a list of charges that are totally off limits 
for representation? Um, definitely um, child molestation, rape, uh, any, anything to do with sexual offenders or uh, beating on a woman. Um, it's just, it's not my thing. I'm not there yet. I have some healing to be done, but you know what? There are plenty of prison consultants popping up every day. I'm sure they would love an opportunity to sit and consult with someone like that should he seek their services. Uh, so it's not mine. It's not my cup of tea. It's not anything that I've stood for ever. Um, I didn't like those individuals while I was on the inside, and so I don't have much sympathy for individuals convicted of those type of crimes. You're in this business to make money, right? Oh, absolutely. Is there any dollar amount, any dollar amount that you would take to take on this case? If so, what is it? If not, why? There's no dollar amount because this is something that's dear to me. I'm not going to compromise my principles for a dollar amount. Um, a victim has no opportunity whatsoever to get closure a lot of times in these cases. It may be months before, years even, before they face their accuser. A lot of times their lives are totally ruined. Women who are molested, raped, some of them going to be, uh, become very promiscuous. Um, men tend to f inflict that same behavior on others. Uh, there's no telling whether, uh, and again, these are allegations against Mr. Mr. Haster, but supposedly one of his victims is now dead. Imagine being molested as a child by someone who you trusted and to live miserable, to reveal that fact to your sister and then die. That means that that individual went his entire life with no closure. That is a sad way to live and a worse way to die. As always, Doc, thanks for the insight. My pleasure, Tom. And keep checking back with us as we explore more important topics that concern you. Suggest topics and your input could be our next segment. Remember to download Cities in Crisis, Youth Violence, December 15th. Video on demand on all major digital platforms.